Can you believe it's almost Halloween? Since we're coming up to Halloween, we're going to be painting another horror movie. And this time, we're going to be painting Jennifer's body. I am not insecure, needy. God, that's a joke. How could I ever be insecure? I was the snowflake queen. Making a cup of tea before starting, of course, it's becoming a routine at this point. Grabbing the cloth and trusty watercolour palette, plus my favourite paintbrushes, the Mop, Princeton and the Ultimate Jackson's Quill Brush, which I've actually got linked below because I use it in virtually every video. And here's the sketch. If you're new to the scene series, hello, welcome. In these episodes, we paint either iconic or obscure scenes from movie and TV shows and have a chat about them whilst painting them. We're filling this whole sketchbook with just scenes and I think it's gonna look fantastic when it's done. So grab a drink and let's paint together. You already saw the scene earlier. That's right, today we're painting an iconic scene from the comedy horror film, Jennifer's Body. If you haven't seen this film before, that's probably because it completely flopped when it was first released in 2009. The movie focuses on two best friends, popular cheerleader Jennifer, played by Megan Fox, and the nerd Needy, played by Amanda Say. Alfred. After a group of guys try to sacrifice Jennifer to the devil, she instead becomes possessed by a demon and turns into a succubus and kind of hunts boys, luring them into secluded areas before ripping them apart and eating them. That's a weird concept, I know, but it's actually a lot better than it sounds and it's funny too. When the film was first released, it was promoted as a movie for young straight men, marketed as a kind of twilight for boys, which is a bit odd considering the plot is a demonic cheerleader that kills and eats boys, but there we are, and that's why it flopped. I mean, it's in a high school setting with narration and comedy and a female-led cast. It's not that far off Mean Girls, just with a little extra horror. It's directed by a woman and that shows. The main characters are women and have depth and emotion, which can be hard to find in other films, especially horror films. I mean, it's a strong feminist movie. I really liked it and wish I'd have watched it sooner. I actually didn't watch it until Halsey's third album came out and my favourite song, Killing Boys, features an unused snippet of the main characters in the movie talking at the beginning of the song, so obviously I had to give it a watch. My main takeaway is how much of a girl's film it is. Even though horror has always been associated with a male audience, we know that women enjoy this genre too. I mean, just look at all the true crime shows and podcasts that we all love. And this movie definitely is one for the girls. I mean, all the men in the movie are either eye candy, victims, or the love interest, which is a complete reversal of the normal gender roles in film. And it's really refreshing. And it's something you don't even notice until you think about the film after. It's just so normalized. And there aren't many films out there that are the other way around. Obviously, the movie spends a lot of time talking about Jennifer and how attractive she is, but even then, she uses it as a strength, as a superpower. The film is violent, funny, not too scary, but it has some good jump scares. And it's just so much fun. It's like Mean Girls, but with demons and murder, I guess. I mean, it's a horror, but I don't think it's scary at all, really. It's definitely a film for the gals, and I don't know why the marketing team at the time thought otherwise. I guess just because it's Megan Fox, maybe? I don't know, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, the scene that I've chosen is actually a pretty big one at the end. The last few we've done haven't been super obscure, they've been scenes that I've wanted to paint or that I think would look good in the sketchbook as we do a flip through. 
Sometimes we pick obscure scenes, and other times I've already got a picture in my head of the scene that I want to paint. This is one of those. The hardest part about painting this movie scene was deciding whether I really want Megan Fox to look like Megan Fox or to look like a character in my art style. The way that I draw faces is slightly different. I tend to make faces a bit rounder with big eyes and it can be hard to make it actually look like a specific person. Especially when it's someone as iconic as Megan Fox. I mean, she also has a very consistent look for over a decade with pretty much the same makeup and hairstyle. So when we picture her, we're all picturing the same look. Saying that, I did want to stylize this painting a little I think it's still recognisable as her, but I managed to get my art style to come across, I think. Something you may or may not have noticed already is that this is the first episode of the scene series that I filmed in my new house. I really loved having white marble vinyl in the previous place because it made the videos look lovely and bright. And honestly, I think I'm gonna have to get some more because this camera is not picking up the wood very well for this desk. Since moving house, I've also started to change the way that I film videos. I'm combining the art process with a more vlog style format with lots of changing camera angles to try and tell a bit more of a story. Let me know if you like this format because I'm a fan, but of course you're the viewer and it only works if we all like it. I'm applying the same style to all my videos regardless of what the actual content is. The hope is that then no matter what we actually do in the video, everything on my channel will follow the same theme and feel like it's still a Chantal Arts video. Even if it's a sketchbook tour, a haul, an art challenge or a painting session, every video going forward is gonna be of the same format. Because I know that the earlier scene series episodes were quite different to other things on my channel, like the bullet journal was quite different too to the rest of them. And unfortunately this series hasn't been doing anywhere near as well as I would have hoped. So we're trying something new. I would still like to keep up the series but the videos just don't perform well unfortunately. Let me know if you've got any ideas, anything you think I could do to improve or make the videos more interesting. Because I'd love to keep filling this sketchbook with you and creating a ton more movie scenes but unfortunately I might not be able to keep doing these episodes if they keep flopping. When it comes to the painting I started with wet on wet for the background. Going into this I felt it was important that we get the values right. There's a lot of green in this scene. You could even see it in the clip at the beginning. The light is reflected throughout the scene even on the character's face. If I'd have painted the character first on a white background and then added the dark background, I think this piece could have looked very odd very quickly. And to be honest, I probably would have painted her too dark. The green might have been too strong and then I might have had to change the value of the background to make it match what I have on paper rather than that of the actual scene. So that's why I did it the other way around. And I mostly used cobalt turquoise for the lighting. A shade that I rarely use, I think because my tube is only like 5 mils and it's Daniel Smith so it's super expensive. But I think in this instance it was a pretty perfect match for the scene. The painting really did need an undertone. The entire scene has an undertone. It needed something to tie the piece together and here it was the turquoise. You can see I was scared of the paint again like I always am. Because I just couldn't get the background dark enough on the first layer, it took multiple just to get it to the right value. Several layers of me checking with the reference and trying to convince myself to paint darker colours. I mean with watercolour you can't really go back, but we got there eventually. 
I decided to reach for the colour pencils since that's something I've been doing a lot more lately. This sketchbook is B5 which is probably the best size in all honesty. It's also the size of my bullet journal, though this sketchbook feels smaller because of the tape around the edges. When it comes to painting detailed scenes, it's the perfect size because it won't take very long, but in something like this portrait, it's just a little bit too small to be able to accurately use watercolour. Things like eyes, eyelashes, it's just so much easier to use a pencil for those details, and honestly, I wish I'd have found colour pencils sooner. Don't get me wrong, I still get scared, and that's why I didn't use them before. It was that fear of messing up and not being able to go backwards because they don't really rub out. Watercolour has this painterly look that can get lost once you add something as textured as pencils. It's a very fine line that I try not to cross. Last time we painted a Disney movie and last Halloween we actually painted an old horror movie, The Omen. They were a lot of fun and they're both in the playlist below if you fancy giving them a watch. I'm super excited to peel off this tape now using the hairdryer as always because even the best washi tape cannot be trusted. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I think we managed to get a fair bit of likeness in this painting. It does kind of look like Megan Fox, right? Since Christmas is coming up, what Christmas movie would you like to see me paint for this year? We've already painted Home Alone and Elf. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you again on Thursday for the Peachtober Art Challenge. Bye bye!